Hey guys, I'm here. Today we're going to be doing an Amy problem uh, from this year actually, and it has applications in geometry and like triangles and stuff like that. So, hope you enjoy it and look at the problem and pause the video if you need to. Okay, here's the solution. So, I uh, in the actual diagram of the test, there are no circles, but I ended up drawing the circles to help you guys out. So let's uh, let's start by marking a center O right here. And let's draw some lines connecting O to A and O to E. Okay. And let's label this angle X. That's where we'll start. And X is the, going to be the variable we're going to try to solve for. This is different from the solution online, but I didn't really like the solution online because it wasn't very clear. This is how I solved it when I took Amy. So if that's X, whoops. Um, what is what is this angle going to be? Well, the basic rule of geometry is basically if you have ah, that's not a circle. If you have a circle right like this, and you have a center O, and you have an arc, an arc like this with an angle theta, then this angle, or this angle, or any angle on the edge, this will all be theta over two. And this is a basic geometry pro pro uh, basic geometry property that you just need to understand and uh, remember. And it's actually extremely useful, especially in this problem. So make sure you uh, remember it. And let's keep going. So if this that's going to be angle x, then this is going to be x over two. Now let's think about it this way. The question asks for angles. Uh, a, B, D, I believe. <laughs> okay, like this. So you need to find this angle. And it also asks for this. So I believe it asks for A, uh, let me check. Uh, a, H, G. It's just a coincidence that the lines, uh, that this line lines up. I don't think it actually lines up, but you know, it's just a coincidence. So we need to find this angle. Okay, so how do we go about going, doing that? Let's go find angle ABD first. So now that we know that this is x over 2, what's this angle? What's this angle? This angle right here is actually just 3 fourths. Uh, whoops, 3. Why is my brush not working? I'm sorry. This angle right here is just going to be 3 fourths multiplied by x over 2. And why is that? The reason it's 3 fourths multiplied by x over 2 is because basically forget about this angle right here we're just looking at the angle formed by arc AD. Well angle arc AD is exactly the length of AD is exactly 3 fourths of the length AE <coughs> because AB, BC, CD, and DE are all placed uh, with equidistant from each other because they're equidistant this arc right here this arc right here is th going to be three-fourths of this arc and because that's three-fourths of this arc the arc angle of this is going to be three-fourths multiplied by the arc angle of this so this is actually just since uh, this the angle of this arc is like x over 2 that means this arc is going to be three-fourths times x over 2 because a, b, c, d, and e are all equidistant from each other. So this is, the, uh, so yeah. So you have this angle. Now let's use another property. The property of cyclic quadrilaterals. Not cyclic squares, cyclic quadrilaterals. It is another useful geometry tool that if you have a quadrilateral somewhere around here, like this, the opposite corners of these quadrilaterals will always add up to 180 degrees. And yes, that can be proven, but I'm not going to prove in this video. Just remember, opposite angles, opposite corners always add up to 180 degrees in a cyclic quadrilateral. Which means this angle is just 180 minus, if we multiply 3 4 times x over 2, 3 eighths x. And that's important because we need this part is part of the equation, right? We this is this is ABD, and we put it in terms of x, which is nice. 
So how do we put angle AHG in terms of X? That's going to be a bit harder. But we do the same thing. Firstly, let's take a look at this. It's going to get messy. What's angle ACE? What's this angle? We use the rule of cyclic quadrilaterals again, and this angle is x over 2, and this qu this side must be 180 minus x over 2. Because this angle this angle at the bottom is 1 over 2, x over 2, so cyclic quadrilaterals again, this has to be 180 minus x over 2. And of course we use the same rule that we used before. This angle right here is 90 minus x over 4 because this angle, this angle right here is one half of this angle. And if this angle is 90 minus x over 4, we do the same thing we did before. That means this angle will be 3 fifths, whoops, geez, this is getting messy, I need a bigger diagram, will be 3 fifths multiplied by 90 minus x over 4. And why is that? Well, uh, a, uh, sorry, I think this, that's an I or an F there. Yeah, that's an I. A, I, H, G, F, and E are all equidistant to each other. So they form five equal arcs. So E, F, F, G, G, H, H, I, and A, I. So they all form equal arcs. So A, H, G takes up three of those arcs. G, H, H, I, and A, A, I. So three of those arcs out of five arcs. So three out of five arcs, that's three-fifths three of the angle of the entire arc. So it's just three fifths of ninety minus x over four. That angle is three fifths times ninety minus uh, ninety times minus x over four, which means this angle, rule of cyclic quadrilaterals, is one eighty minus three fifths ninety minus x over four. And that's cool. That's cool. What do we have now? The question says the angle ABD exceeds AHG by twelve. And we can just plug in those values, so 180 minus 3 eighths x, this is ABD, equals 180 minus 3 fifths, 90 minus x over 4, plus 12. And this part right here is AHG. Now we have a system of equations. And if you solve this out, you get x equals a really nice number, 80 degrees. So what does that mean? It means this angle right here is 80 degrees. Now how does that help us? Well, here comes like the next part of the question that's going to be slightly harder. Well, not maybe not slightly harder. Now we have to find BAG, or BAG. And that might be an awkward angle to find because it uses an angle from both circles, like a point on both circles, which is why we're going to split this up. Let's draw a line from E to A. There you go. Now, this means that this angle plus this angle is going to be angle BAG. That may be getting messy, so I'll write it out. Angle BAE, bay, oh yeah, um, plus a measure of angle EAG equals measure of angle bag. There you go. So let's measure, what's the measure of angle bay? So the measure of angle bay, like I said, using the rule of the uh, the circle, this angle is the same as this angle, is the same as this angle, and that's all theta over two. Which means if we know x is eighty, and this these a uh, a touches the circle, then this angle is uh, this angle b a e bay is the same as b uh, all, this point down here, b this point down here e. Because both in both of these, A and this point down here, both touch the side of the circle. And they are all equal to x over 2. Which means measure of angle bay. And let's not forget though. We're not we're not forgetting anything. Bay, even though this angle this point both they both touch the circle, is actually uh okay, B A sorry. I shouldn't have said that. BAE is not equal to this x over 2 because it only takes up 3 fourths of the arcs. Remember, BA is not included because only B, C, C, D, and C, D, E is included in this angle. So BAE, BA is excluded from this arc. Which means it's actually 3 fourths x over 2 
which if you plug in x is 80, you get 30. 30 degrees. Now what's EAG? Let's do the same thing. So EAG also touches the side of this circle right here, this smaller circle right here. And since the angle of this smaller circle is 90 minus x over 4, I mean, the angle, the point here, this angle, this entire arc is 90 minus x over 4. And as usual, uh, but this, this angle right here, E this point G, which is the same as EAG, let's, let's, I'm going to review why they're the same. Uh, this is the same because E, they both, the, this point and A both touch the sides of this circle. Thus, the angle of the arc remains consistent because this point touches the side of the circle and because this point is like one half of ECG. This is getting really confusing. I'm sorry, there's so many lines. So ECG is the angle of this arc. Uh, e, this point G, is the angle of this arc over 2 and so is EAG. Um, this arc is two-fifths of the entire huge arc and the entire huge arc is 180 minus um, x over 2. I mean 180 minus, well yeah, 180 minus x over 2. Which means 180 minus x over 2 times 2 fifths um, divided by 2, oh yeah, divided by 2 is going to equal measure EAG. And that's really confusing, I'm really sorry. So many lines, but basically EAG is equal to E this point this point right here, G, which is equal to two fifths to multiply the length of this entire arc. And the length of this entire arc is just 90 minus x over 4, which is 180 minus x over 2 over 2. And that will equal 28. If you calculate it out and you plug in x. Woof. That was really long. We're almost there. What's 28 plus 30? This is the hardest pro part of the problem. It's 58 degrees, which is equal to the measure of bag. So I hope you found this problem interesting. Um, when I was doing it during the Amy, it took up a lot of scratch paper because I kept screwing up the angles and there were too many lines to keep track of. But uh, after you get the answer, it's really satisfying with, with how neat it comes out and yeah. So I hope you had a good time. I sure did. Um, I'll see you next week. I don't want to confuse you guys. Multiply this value by this value. And uh, let's try to solve it. So uh, as you can see, this looks sort of like this side, actually. I mean, there's two quantities that you multiply together. And if we actually plug these in for this, the, we actually plug this into the side, what do we get on this side then? So if A1 equals BC times PD, and B1 equals BC over PD, then what's A1 times B1? Well, if you take the square root, uh, sorry, a1 squared 